Good morning, church. It is so good to have you with us today. Um, we welcome the Reverend Dr. Larry Hyde Jr. into our pulpit today in Pastor Stacy's absence. And so I bid you welcome and thank you, thank you so much for being with us this morning. So please join with me in the call to worship. Oh God, who is greater than the most powerful forces in this world, enable us to be still and know that you are God. O oh Lord, who answers out of the whirlwind of everyday life, breathe in us your Holy Spirit to strengthen, comfort, and guide us in the midst of the storm. O oh, still, small voice, speak to us this hour that we might become makers of your peace in our homes, in our communities, and in our world. We pray all this in the name of the one who calmed the raging sea. Amen. And now we're opening him. Today's scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 8, verses 18 through 27. Now, when Jesus saw great crowds around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. A scribe then approached and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, 
follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. A windstorm arose on the sea so great that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him up saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. And he said to them, why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a dead calm. They were amazed, saying, what sort of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? The word of the Lord. Well, good morning again. It is good to be here. We don't have a whole lot of kids in here in worship with us this morning, but we're going we're gonna to plug right along here because we'll be streaming later and um, we might have kids watching a little bit later. So I'll speak to you, the adults, a little bit more uh, than I might have to the kids this morning. So give me a hand up if you've been to Knott's Berry Farm. Okay. That's a lot of folks, most of us here. Um, if you've been to Knott's Berry Farm and you were born um, before about 1980, then you're probably familiar with the Sky Tower at Knott's Berry Farm. It's one of the tallest structures there. And people can actually see it when they're driving up the Artesia Freeway. And so up on your screens, you'll see a picture of the Sky Tower. Now, this is a picture of the Sky Tower as it originally was when it opened in 1976. Uh, it had attached to it two different rides. And one of them was the Sky Cabin, and the other was these parachutes that you see here that are called the Sky Jump. And the Sky Jump is no longer part of the Sky Tower as it is now. The Sky Tower is still at Knott's, but lots of people remember it. It was removed in 1999 for safety reasons, and I'll talk more about it in a moment, but I just wanted to give you a little history because it doesn't exist anymore. So the first time um, I ever went to Knott's, I was about seven, I think, and I was just getting to be tall enough to ride on some of the faster roller coasters. And so we got there and my brothers who are a few years older than me were really excited about going on big roller coasters and my mom really loved roller coasters at the time and they were off riding on a roller coaster but I wasn't quite ready to do that yet. And so my dad stayed behind with me while my brothers um, went with my mom on a roller coaster. And of course, as might happen with someone who's seven and just waiting for her brothers to get out of a roller coaster ride, I got bored and I noticed the sky jump. And I saw these beautiful, colorful parachutes that looked like sea jellies in the ocean and how they would contract as they went up and then expand as they went down. And I wanted to try it. And so I asked my dad, can we go on this ride? And my dad said, we're waiting for your brothers and your mom to get off this ride. If we're not here when they get off, they're, they're going to get worried. You know, we've, we've got to stay put. So in seven-year-old fashion, I kept asking, please, 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 please. And after about the hundredth time, I think, my dad finally relented. And he says, you know what? You go ahead. I'm going to stay behind and wait for your mom and your brothers, but you go ahead and ride. The line isn't very long and, and you have a good time. So he walked me to the entrance and we come to find out that if you're a kid, you can't ride that ride by yourself. It had to be with an adult. No, oh, I was so sad because I really, really wanted to go on that ride. And so we're getting ready to walk away and all of a sudden, this lady comes by. And she must have overheard the conversation between my dad and me because she says, well, 
I'm about to go on this ride by myself. You're welcome to come with me if you'd like to. Um, and I wouldn't mind having the company. And I thought for sure my dad was going to say no because she was a stranger and she just came up and said, you know, want to come ride this ride with me. So expecting to hear the word no, <clears throat> imagine my shock when my dad said, okay. <laughs> and so he looks at me and he says the usual things that dads say. Be polite, follow directions, and as soon as the ride's over, come and find me at the exit. I was in shock, but got over it because I got to go on the ride. And so we, I went with this lady into the line, and I was a little nervous being with her at first because I didn't know her, but she ended up being really, really nice. And she asked me all the things, what's your name, how old are you, what grade are you in? Um, and then she told me a little bit about herself. She said that she was in town, from out of town, visiting her grown daughter and her family. And she remembered a ride like the sky jump when she was younger in Coney Island in New York. And she wanted to have that experience again, but no one in her family wanted to ride with her then. So she was happy to have the company. Well, we got to talking and the time passed like nothing and all of a sudden we we're at the front of the ride. And so we got in and those of you that know the ride, you are basically getting in this metal cage that doesn't have a lid, <laughs> that has a parachute on top and it zips you up 200 feet to the top of this tower. It hangs out there for a moment and then the cables release and you start coming down. Not, the cables don't release, the ride itself releases the basket and you start going down. You're, you're still attached to the cables, but until that parachute kicks in, it's a bit of a free fall and it's scary. And it was in that moment that I realized I'm afraid of heights and I was terrified. And so as we're going down, I let out this little and I closed my eyes because I couldn't look. But the lady said to me, it's okay. You don't have to be afraid. I'm with you and we're safe and we're gonna be fine all the way down. She kept talking to me in this really calm and soothing voice. And after a while, I was able to open my eyes, still hanging on for dear life to the sides of that basket. But I did open my eyes just for a moment while we were still in the air, enough to see some of what was around us in an aerial view. And then the ride was over. She took me back to my dad, her family met her, and they went on their way. I am still to this day afraid of heights, deathly afraid of heights, and I learned not too long ago that the reason my dad didn't come with me on that ride is because he was afraid too. <laughs> so, um, as I was reading our Bible story today, it reminded me of this experience, that, that absolute terror that I was either gonna fall out of that basket to my death or just die of fright. And I imagine as the disciples were in that boat, they were probably feeling the same thing. They were either gonna get swept out into the ocean and drown, or they were just gonna die of fright. But just like that lady spoke to me in her soothing voice, Jesus said, peace, be still. Everything is gonna be okay. You're not alone and I'm with you and you are safe. So this story actually is told in all four Gospels. And, boys and girls, this afternoon, I actually invite you to look into the Gospels and compare the different ways the stories are told. I'm not gonna get into that today, but the fact of the matter is that fear is there. The disciples were afraid and Jesus did speak and calm them and not only calm the waves, but calm the disciples as well. 
And I think what I take away from that is that this is a lesson for us today that when we're in our very darkest moments and it doesn't think, seem like anything's going to get better, that it, that it stands to get much, much worse, that we can speak to God and tell him when we're afraid or we're confused or when we're angry. And he'll let us know in his way that we're not alone. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for this day and for the chance to be in worship together. Oh God, please help us to remember that even when we're in our very darkest moments and we feel the most alone, that we can talk to you and remember that you are with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I'm going to hang out up here for a couple more minutes just to share some announcements with you. Our flower arrangement today is not dedicated. So if you are so inclined and you'd like to take some blooms from our, uh, our floral arrangement today, please feel free to do so. And know that the flowers can be dedicated at any time. Just um, shoot an email or give a call to Claudia in the church office. Um, if you would like to dedicate the flowers and worship to someone special in your life. Our, f our food basket is given by Marshall and Margie Jones in memory of the birthday of our dear friend Marie Patterson, whose birthday is on August 31st. And so, Marie in heaven, we love you and we miss you and happy birthday. Um, let's see. We welcome the Reverend Dr. Larry High Jr. today. He's a lecturer and inter internship coordinator um, in the Communication Studies Department at Cal State San Bernardino. Um, and he is a member currently at Harmony Toluca Lake United Methodist Church. So we are excited to hear what words he has to share with us today. Um, we are experiencing an uptick in uh, COVID cases due to the Delta variant. And so there will be a pause on Friday meals for a couple of weeks. So just know that um, if you normally call in for a Friday meal, that, that won't be available just for the next couple of weeks until we get some more information about that. Okay. Um, and then next Sunday, we're going to have our drive through communion. And so we invite you to come and pick up your communion packet. Um, if you would like to pick up a copy of the upper, upper room, drop off your offering, um, pick up a Sunday school packet, all of that will be available uh, next Sunday. So please plan on joining us after worship ends next Sunday um, for drive through communion. And then finally, September is Missionary Month, and we support... Uh, Alma and Richard Navarro, who are doing some very important and vital work in Taiwan. And so from now through Thursday, September 30th, you can donate specifically toward their work, either um, in your offering envelope or online through our giving portal. So you can go to the church website and give there and specifically designate some funds to support the Navarros in their missionary work. Um, if you write a check, please make sure to put the Navarros name on the memo line so that that can be routed appropriately. Okay. All right. And so not having received any prayer requests, uh, would you bow your heads in prayer with me? Holy One, you anoint us with living water so we may go to serve the world in these troubled days. You open our eyes so we will see everyone as our brothers and sisters. Seed planter, you place faith deep within us so we can bear witness to your just and loving kingdom. Your love regulates our hearts so we can welcome all in your name. Gentle spirit, when we cannot see the way, you take us by the hand so we can step forward in faith into the kingdom. 
You fill us with hope so we can sing God's joy all of our days. God in community, holy and one, hear us as we pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So we've come to the time in our worship where we share our tithes and offerings. Uh, if you would prefer, you can give online through our giving portal. You can uh, access that through the website. Um, and those of you in worship this morning, you can drop off your offering in the glass vase out in the narthex. And now, Marshall and Richard Jones. Except for the Except for the Lord, the Lord. And let all who toil, let them come. Yeah. 
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. May the offerings brought this day be used as seeds, planted faithfully and nurtured lovingly, so that God's way may be realized anew in this world. Grant us the humility we need to plant and then tend your precious garden. Amen. Praise the Lord, my brothers and my sisters. This is the day that the Lord has made, and every day that God wakes us up, we should rejoice and be glad, for it's another day for us to go forward and to be in God's mission and to be about God's ministry in the places where God has placed us for such a time as this. This is still a great day, even uh, in the midst of a global pandemic and everything else that is going on in our world and in our communities, this is a great day. Our scripture this morning has already been lifted up for your hearing. I want to uh, key in on verse number 27 uh, of that passage. And verse number 27 says, uh, they were amazed saying, what sort of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? What sort of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? This morning, uh, for just a few minutes, I want to talk about hope in the midst of the storm, hope in the midst of the storm. Let us pray. God, we thank you for another day's journey. We thank you for another beautiful sunrise, another day that you've allowed us to see. God, we thank you for continuing to be a God who makes the impossible possible in our lives. We thank you for being a God who continues to move the mountains and the stumbling blocks that get in our way. Now, Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, stop by this place and fall fresh upon me, your servant, one more time as I attempt to proclaim your word. Help me, O oh God, to sit down and help your word to, to stand up and to stand tall and to fall fresh upon hearts this day. Less of me and more of thee, O oh God, is my prayer. God, you are awesome and you are amazing right here in this place on this day, and for this we give you thanks. It's in your awesome, precious, powerful Son, Jesus name name we pray. Amen. Hope in the midst of the star storm. The village of Capernaum was right on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Like many Galileans, we were familiar with boats and life near this large lake. The Sea of Galilee was well known for its sudden violent storms, and the severity of the storm was evident in the fact that disciples, uh, many of them who were experienced fishermen, they were, they were terrified, crying out, Lord, save us. We are perishing. Though the disciples were desperate, Jesus was asleep. It must have seemed strange to them that Jesus could sleep in the midst of this terrible storm. When they awoke, uh, Jesus, he rebuked their fear and unbelief, not their request or waking him. We shouldn't think that Jesus was in a bad mood for being awakened. He was upset at their fear because fear and unbelief go together. When we trust God as we should trust God, there is little room that is left for fear. Jesus didn't merely quiet the wind and the sea. He rebuked the winds and the sea, and in the span of a few moments, the disciples saw both the complete humanity of Jesus in his tired sleep and the fullness of his deity. They saw Jesus for who he is, truly man and truly God. The disciples marvel at Jesus now because even the, the very elements of the world obey him and heed his very words. 
Jesus is progressively revealing to his disciples that he is qualified to be the savior of the world. He must have victory over all of the forces in heaven and upon earth. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus is presented as meeting all of the criteria necessary to validate his being the eternal son of God for all of eternity. This morning, my brothers and sisters, some of us find ourselves in the midst of life storms. We find ourselves caught up in all of the chaos. This morning, some of us find ourselves in the midst of life storm. There are three things, three things that I want us to remember this morning as Jesus calms the storm. Three things. God is with us in the midst of life storms. God is with us in the midst of life storms. I want us to remember that there is hope in the storm. There is hope in the storm. And finally, we've got to be the hope. We've got to be the hope. God is with us in the midst of life storms. To say the past year and a half has been a storm would be an understatement. Around the world, there have been 215 million coronavirus cases with almost 4.4 million people dying from this deadly virus. In California, we have had 4.3 million infections with 1.4 of them being right here in Los Angeles County. There have been more than 65,000 deaths in California, with 25,000 of them being in L.A. County. My daily thoughts and my daily prayers continue for the family and friends of the, the 4.4 million people that have, that have died from the virus around the globe. My prayers are with the folks who have lost their jobs, businesses that were life dreams that have closed, and countless celebrations and mourning that have not taken place in the traditional ways. On my 44th birthday, which was Thursday, March the 19th, 2020, our California Governor Gavin Newsom issued the nation's first statewide stay-at-home order, closing all non-essential businesses and restaurant dining. I was preparing for spring break and a much-anticipated trip to Portugal. Life as we knew it had changed. During the pandemic, travel was halted. Six feet apart became the new norm. Family gatherings were canceled. Weddings, funerals, schools all went online. I'm a professor at Cal State San Bernardino. My college has 20,000 students, and we are a Hispanic-serving institution. 60% of our students are Latino, and another 20% are ethnic minority. 80% of our students are first-generation college students, and 60% of them live in poverty. They are frontline and essential workers living in multi-generational households. Most of my students have the, have the odds stacked against them without a global pandemic. A few months ago, it seemed like our lives were starting to return back to, to some resemblance of our daily normal. And now, and now here comes the Delta and the Lambda variant. The storms seem to be raging this past week. We have some restrictions that are being put back in place. One of my colleagues, I was talking to him, he has a, a six-year-old in kindergarten about how he was going, and he talked about just the obstacles of only meeting the, the teachers through the chain link fence and hearing how a, how a six-year-old perceives school but not being able to go in and see the classroom. Our country continues to just experience a, a level of angry rhetoric, and it's, it's precipitated by a whole bunch of things, storms raging this week. We continue to see our brothers and sisters in Haiti deal with, with civil unrest and now the ravages of another earthquake. The storms seem to be raging this past week. We watched as, as folks were desperate to flee Afghanistan, folks dangling from a, a military cargo plane, women passing babies over barbed wire fences so that their children might be, have a, a better life. 
suicide bombers, killing at least 90 folks, including 13 U.S. service members. And I saw on the news before I departed to come here that there was another bombing of some sort this morning. Literal storms. Literal storms seem to be raging this week as Hurricane Ida barrels toward the Gulf Coast as we approach the 10th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. Firefighters battle fires all across the, the western United States in this scorching heat. The storms seem to be raging all around us this week. But I want us to remind us I want us to, to remind us this morning that, that Jesus was on the boat with the disciples during the storm. Jesus is on the boat with us during all of our life's obstacles. Jesus is on the boat with us during our valley experiences. Jesus is on the boat with us no matter our, our current circumstance or our current situation. Jesus is on the boat with us during this global pandemic and, and seasons of hate that have dominated our society. Jesus is on the boat with us during this storm. My brothers and sisters, God is with us this morning in the midst of life's storms. But I also want us to realize that, that there is hope. There is hope. Even in the midst of a storm, there is hope. Mr. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was probably my, my favorite childhood show. And, and Fred Rogers always says, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. During this pandemic, we have seen the helpers. I would add, see the hope in the helpers. We have witnessed healthcare professionals lay it all on the line to, to care for those who are dying. We have, have seen teachers pivot uh, to a virtual world that they have not been prepared for and now going back into the classrooms in another world that they have not been prepared for. We have seen grocery store workers and bus drivers and Amazon and FedEx and UPS delivery workers. Everybody's stepping up to the plate. Look for the helpers and see the hope. I see the hope. I see the hope as the CDC released numbers early this month with 168 million folks in America being fully vaccinated. I, I, I see the hope uh, this afternoon as the main campus of my church, Hollywood United Methodist Church, hosts a, a ring for the vaccine event. And uh, there's a vaccination clinic, and they're going to ring the, the, the bell tower, the historic bell tower, for every vaccine this afternoon that is given. I see the hope as I look at my social media feeds and, and children are returning back to school in the classroom. I see the hope this week as I return back to the classroom for the first time since March of 2020 for in-person instruction. Hope, hope, hope comes when Jesus asks, why? are you afraid, you of little faith? Why are you afraid, you of, of little faith? Then he got up and he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was the dead calm. There is hope. There is hope this morning. My favorite passage of Scripture is Psalm, Psalm 27, which begins, The Lord is, is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom, of whom shall I be afraid? There is hope this morning. There is hope this morning in the midst of the storm. God is with us this morning in the midst of life's storm. There is hope this morning in the storm. But, but my brothers and sisters, we've got to reach out and we've got to be the hope. We've got to be the hope. Someone told me, and I've had this discussion with several folks, that we've lost, we've lost time from our lives during the, the, the COVID pandemic. This was a year and a half that was wasted, that was lost. And my response to them is, no, it's not. It's not a wasted year. It's not a year of loss. Psalm 27 ends with these words. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. 
even in the midst of a global pandemic. I live with hope and it is well with my soul will ring from my lips. It has been a year of growth and a year and a half of deep reflection. I know that I was privileged to have meaningful work that I enjoy and was able to do from home. I learned as much about life from my students as they learned from me about communications. Being a virtual professor had its challenges. Going back into the classroom, where in some classes I have some folks here and some folks on Zoom, is going to be a challenge. I continue to adapt. I continue to grow. I continue to change and to challenge myself. We've got to be the hope. We've got to be the hope. The world is in need right now for the people who claim to follow Jesus, the risen Christ, to get busy uplifting us from the chaos. The world is waiting on us to find realistic solution to empower our brothers and our sisters all around Los Angeles County who are unhoused. As people of faith, we've got to be part of the solution that, that creates affordable housing. We've got to be the hope. As people of faith, we've got to challenge the places in which we do business to pay people living wages. We've got to be the hope. As people of faith, we've got to not sit idly by. We've, we've got to challenge all of the isms and, and the phobias that continue to plague our society. We've got to enter our workplaces, enter our social circles, and some of our homes and, and try triumphantly declare, not this day in the name of Jesus. We've got to be the hope. As people of faith, we must hold our elected officials accountable. We must continue continually remind them that they work for us. As people of faith, we must lead the charge in, in listening to others and elevating our dialogue beyond sound bites into meaningful conversations that lead to lasting change. That's what the God that we serve this morning is calling us forth to do. We've got to be the hope. We've got to be the hope, and we need to learn to sing this morning. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well, it is well this day with my hope with my soul. We've got, to, we've got to be the hope this day. We've got to be the hope and we've got to learn to sing that, that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the, the sweetest rain, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground this day is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. My brothers and my sisters, we've got to be the hope. And my prayer is that we don't go back to the world as we knew it. We don't go back to the way that things were, but that we work to create a new, more just, and equitable society for all of God's children. My prayer is that we work towards a new normal. We've got to be the hope. They were amazed, saying, what sort of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? This morning, I challenge you to place your hope in the greatest man in history. He had no servants, yet they called him master. He had no degree, yet they called him teacher. Place your, your hope in the one who had no medicines, yet they called him healer. He had no army, yet kings feared him. He won no military battles, yet he conquered the world. Place your hope this day in the one who, who committed no crime, yet they crucified him. He was buried in a borrowed tomb, yet he lives today. Place your hope in the one named Jesus. He is the sort of man that even the winds and the sea obey him. And we got into the boat. His disciples followed him. A windstorm arose on the sea so great that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and they woke him up saying, Lord, Lord, save us, we are perishing. And he said to them, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid, you of, of little faith? Then he got up 
and he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a dead calm. They were amazed, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? God is with us. God is with us this day in the midst of life's storms. There is hope. There is hope even in the middle of the storm. And we've got to be the hope. We've got to be the hope. They were amazed, saying, What sort of man is this? that even the winds and the sea obey him. What sort of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? There is hope this morning in the midst of the storm. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, and in the name of God's Holy Spirit, let the people of God this day say hallelujah, hallelujah, and amen. morning church while you're in worship this morning i'm here at beautiful camp jumonville in pennsylvania now while i've been here working to help plan the national camp gathering for october i've also spent a lot of time on phone calls texts and emails related to covid both in talking with people who have tested positive for the virus as well as those who have been exposed to the virus and in looking at some of the new county health rules that have come about. Part of my time has also been spent consulting with our worship committee to determine what we do about these rising numbers and the way that the virus is ignoring vaccinations. With that, we have determined that beginning next Sunday, September 5th, we will pause in-person worship 
until the Delta variant is better under control. We're praying that you will understand our decision to have best practices to care for our church community, our full community, and our neighbors. Before you know it, we will be back here in the sanctuary, praying, praising, and being with one another. I hope that you have a blessed morning, and I will see you next week live on Facebook and YouTube. God bless. God is with us in the midst of life storm and on Facebook and on YouTube uh, as well. I ask that we receive now this benediction. Sisters and brothers of Christ, go into all the world. Go forth with forgiveness and grace. Go forth with compassion and love. We go as Christ's family for all the world to see. Amen.